Okay, we'll start with the next presentation, we'll, we'll, which will be, be delivered by Ivan Ivanov. I heard it's a common name in Bulgaria, <laughs> and he's a student at ITC, working on his master's, and uh, he's going to present on uh, boundary delineation plugin for QGIS, uh, where you can extract information from aerial images. Please. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank, uh, thanks to organizers for their studentship program. My name is Ivan Ivanov, I'm from Bulgaria, and yeah, you see what is the title of my presentation. Um, a quick introduction, who am I? I'm doing my uh, second year master's in uh, ITC in spatial engineering in the Netherlands. I already have six years of um, experience as a software engineer using Plural and JavaScript mainly, and uh, recently Python, and yeah, I'm 25 years uh, with the spirit of geographer. Uh, in my spare time, I have uh, several projects, side projects uh, related either to geo or to education. Um, I have three, uh, I'm contributing to three plugins. The first one is for handling the raster no data. The second one is um, for uh, browsing satellite uh, imagery. If you're not familiar with the protocol of stack, uh, I highly recommend it. It's really convenient. It's something I was needing for a long time and the boundary delineation plugin that I'm going to present in uh, a few slides. So, um, the project uh, I joined at um, ITC, it's called It's for Land. Um, I joined uh, recently, six months ago. Um, the project itself aims to deliver a set of uh, um, land tenure management tools that uh, should be cheap, fast, and, uh, and easy to use. All these marketing uh, um, words is there. Um, the idea is to be open source uh, and also the target place where it should be used is mostly in developing countries. Uh, we have partnerships uh, with um, Rwanda, Kenya and uh, Ethiopia um, and it's a big consortium around it. Um, so the main technical part is uh, in the middle of, um, of the picture on the side. Um, so first, um, people are creating sketch maps because they have the local tacit knowledge uh, where is whose land and, and how big it should be and, and all this local knowledge. Then it's um, uploaded and processed and uh, digitized and used later to reference the, the extracted boundaries. The second part is fly and create, which is uh, you fly the drone, take the, the uh, images, uh, then create auto photo um, and uh, yeah, stop here and automate it uh, if you need it, um, you can take the, this auto photo and uh, the DSM and extract boundaries, visual boundaries from the from the image. And uh, yeah, finally is the platform publishing share where you store the data, um, and uh, the local authorities can access it. Um, the things that are surrounded in uh, in red are actually parts where ITC is involved, and uh, I'm also involved. Um, yeah, as I said, it's an international consortium. There are three universities, the University of Twente, Münster, and uh, Leuven. Uh, Hansa Luftbild is building the, the bigger part of the technical, um, technical part of the project, and also local partners in, in Africa. Uh, and the project is uh, funded by Horizon 2020, by European Commission. So, uh, what we're trying to solve. Um, because these countries are, uh, to some extent, lacking behind and they don't have established um, cadastral system, um, they usually use the traditional approach of uh, taking a high resolution image and manually delineating point by point, um, which can be very slow process and sometimes frustrating. Um, because sometimes you see an obvious line and you say, okay, can a computer or algorithm help us with, uh, with uh, suggesting, okay, there is a boundary. So this is what we're doing. We're flying the drone, getting the orthophoto, photo, uh, running the algorithm, and extracting the boundaries. So basically, this is um, how it works. Um, the ortho image from the previous, um, uh, from the previous module in the, in the whole system. Uh, we have um, <coughs> uh, RGB image and uh, and uh, the digital service model of the area of interest. Then um, we run the image segmentation uh, using uh, MCG. 
Uh, it proposes the, 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 the segments, then uh, there is a random forest uh, classificator to see which is uh, uh, probable, more probable to be a boundary or less. And uh, then it comes my part, the QGIS plugin, that um, operators are um, finally confirming, okay, this is a boundary, and it goes to the system. So yeah, in the end, uh, you have a cadastral boundaries. Um, what is the it's for land platform? Um, it's important to mention here because it's kind of the, the central place of the it's for land um, project. It's the, the place where the data is stored and managed. Uh, all these tools I told you, for example, for uh, creating ortho photo, um, it's a dockerized um, open drone map. Um, the tool that is extracting the, the boundaries also should be a dockerized, um, dockerized image. However, it, uh, it uses some MATLAB, um, MATLAB algorithms, which makes it not very easy to do so, but we are looking for a solution in the future. So, the plugin itself, um, it's very simple, simple interface. Um, it's written in such a way that it's not mandatory to be used only in its for land uh, um, context. Um, on the second line, you select the segments layer, which is basically a, a lines layer that uh, is the possible boundaries. Uh, you can also select a raster base layer uh, for a visual confirmation of the operator. You click process, and you get um, interface something like this. I'm not sure how visible it is, but the green lines are, are what's the algorithm proposed or the other input somehow. It, it can came, it can come not only from our algorithm that we developed, but also from alternative. For example, my master's is also going to this direction, so probably next year I can also create such segments layer. Uh, there are little red dots uh, that are the, the vertices where two or more lines are meeting. I'm not sure if it's visible here. So then you, we go to step two, uh, where you have uh, four different uh, ways to, to select the, the polygons of the, of the um, properties, um, polygons, lines, vertices, and manual. I'm going to show them one by one. Um, just to mention, uh, there is native integration with its for land uh, platform. So the projects you have on the platform, you can load them directly from QGIS. Um, also the, the segmentation uh, lines uh, can be listed there. However, uh, this um, set does not have, there is no sets found for this project. Um, and also you can directly upload the final result to the It's For Land platform. Okay, um, unfortunately uh, the video is not uh, working here, but I can move to the next slide and show you how to select by polygon. So, ah, unfortunately it's not very easy to see, but there is a little uh, orange square in the middle of the screen that selects several obvious polygons. However, the, the layer we have as input is, uh, is line layer. So it just looks for surrounding polygon, and you have the surrounding polygon. When you are um, ready, you click uh, Accept down on the, on the left. The other possibility is to select by line. So you have these different lines that are um, they're, they're visually connected, but uh, as a feature, they're actually separate. So you can select two lines. There is also one orange uh, square. I'm not sure if it's visible. So we're selecting these two lines, and uh, it finds the, the, the shortest path how to close these lines. Um, it's important to know that uh, if you have more than two gaps, uh, of course, the algorithm uh, says, okay, I, I cannot find the, the, the best shape because it does not know how to, to close it. But you can see in the, in the bottom, uh, the line is straight, not following the, the line that is suggested by the segmentation um, algorithm. Um, also, there is possibility to select by vertices. So you can select uh, um, vertices that are, um, should enclose a polygon. For example, here, again, there is a little orange uh, square or a rectangle that selects some of the vertices. And um, it finds the shortest path. Or um, if you look at the, 
the plugin interface, uh, there is a, uh, one drop down where it, it writes a boundary. Uh, here you can select uh, different weights for the algorithm to, to make the shortest path. It can be either length or, or um, some weight that is produced by the, the, the algorithm that produces the suggested boundaries or whatever else. And the final part is, um, of course, the algorithm is not perfect. Um, it, uh, it reaches something like 80% accuracy in, in perfect conditions, it's the maximum. So sometimes you have to manually um, further edit the, the lines. So you select the polygon, then you click on edit, there is one edit, and you can edit the, the vertices that are inside this polygon. So now they are selected. I'm not sure if you can see the blue dots. Uh, we remove them, and we're, let's say we're happy with this polygon. Okay, this is the property that we're going to put in the cadastro system. Okay, we accept it, but then if we don't update the topology, uh, the problem would be that the, the, little, the little patch that is in the middle is not going to be um, selectable. So if you click Update Edits, you, you can create another polygon around it, and then you select only this patch that, that was left. And of course, you can select uh, further polygons to merge them and to create a final um, feature. When you're ready, of course, you can click on uh, Finish. Um, it's important to know that the Eat for Land um, platform by itself um, stores, the, stores the features as line strings. Uh, for some reason, I'm still not very sure why Hans and Ludwig decided to, to do it like this. Um, but you can always click uh, on a polygonized la layer and uh, yeah, use the native QGIS plugin, um, algorithms to uh, create polygons from the lines. So basically, this is a functionality. It's not much, but it's a combination of, uh, of already existing uh, QGIS uh, functionalities that are made easy to use. Uh, what is coming? Uh, better integration with its for land platform. Uh, recently, there were new APIs that were, um, that were uh, published uh, from, from our colleagues in Munster. Um, so loading base layer now wouldn't be the big uh, orthophoto, but it would be tilt layer. Um, also saving features uh, has improvements in, in the new API. Um, I have to write it uh, in the next month, I guess. Um, Currently, there are no fields that uh, you can enter for the, for the final layer. Um, this is something I'm planning to add. Um, for example, a name, address, or whatever, or um, some ID. Um, and uh, the topology problem I have is um, the algorithm that I, I wrote is not the fastest right now. It takes uh, like a second and a half or two seconds to, to update. Um, I already have an idea how to optimize it. But um, yeah, I have to do it. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, you're welcome. Oh, something I forgot to mention, uh, special credits to Sophie Kromeling. Um, she is the PhD who wrote the algorithm for extracting the boundaries. And um, actually, uh, that's why I'm involved with this project. Um, she also um, suggested me to come here to present this, and yeah, I hope it was interesting for you. Yeah, we've had uh, Sophie presenting her algorithm at other meetings already in, in Denmark, I think. Yeah. yeah. Any questions on the work we do? Yes. It's more on the algorithm side. How do you decide what algorithm to use for detecting the boundaries? Do you have some knowledge about it? Um, actually, this is the research of Sophie to select the, the, the most optimal algorithm for extracting the boundaries. Um, if you look at the, her GitHub uh, history, actually, it's the, the third link um, there. She tried several different, and I think she finally settled with uh, MCG. Other questions?
have plenty of time, yeah. So just like a general question, why would you need such high resolution for this um, since the parcels are generally quite large, I assume? Like, I don't know what is the smallest unit that you have, but um, and you need to map such large areas. It just would make sense to use some, uh, for example, the three meter planet imagery or something that is a bit more lower in resolution. It doesn't seem like you would need to fly a drone over the whole country. Just as a general question. Yeah. Um, Actually, the, the data that you see here is uh, with five, five centimeters resolution. Wow. It is proved to be with um, the best results. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the whole tool depends on visual, visual boundaries. So if you have very large pixels um, and you have, for example, just a, um, I would say, a, um, fence between two, two properties, then this is not going to be visible in the in the very large pixels. Questions? Yep. What about using multiple bandwidths, like not only sRGB? Bandwidths when you do the an analysis on a war resolution images. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, it was related to what he asked about using the three meter yeah. image resolution. What if you use the other bandwidths that are in the image in order to do the boundary detection? Because I assume the algorithm that you're using is most likely only the visible bandwidth. That's the sRGB. So what if you utilize the bandwidth that the other wavelengths that are recorded in the image. Um, yes, I, to be honest, I, I, I really don't know why we consider only the three visible, um, visible uh, spectral wavelengths, but um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. Uh, we also use the digital surface model to, so uh, it's not only seeing the, the um, shift between the colors or whatever, we're also looking at the, the difference in the DSM to detect the boundary. But why we don't use, for example, um, mm, let's say microwave, I don't know. I really don't know. I cannot answer. Um, in addition to the previous question, um, this, uh, this algorithm and this plugin also can be used in uh, urbanized areas. And um, especially in these three countries where the project is, uh, where our partners are based, there are a lot of slum areas where the housing itself sometimes is, uh, the house is less than one pixel in, a, let's say, a Sentinel or whatever else satellite imagery. Uh, do you have any final questions? Oh, I mean, even more, we have plenty of time, but... <laughs> if not, then thanks again, and we have uh, a lot of time to switch to the next one, uh, 12 minutes. There will be another presentation on uh, processing on QBs. Thank you.